Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, Diggy546? Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so practice the last couple of days has actually been pretty quiet. And the reason I didn't put up a video yesterday was because it was pretty much just a walkthrough kind of practice. It was a day off, pretty much. They were recovering from pads. They were back in pads today, but I didn't see much highlights. Of course, probably when the video goes up, the training camp live kind of thing, you'll see a couple of highlights, but not much has happened that's been really eventful. Zach Fulton retired. I have a whole other video about Zach Fulton and everybody else retiring and the whole Joe Judge shenanigans that, the, that everybody's just trying to tear him apart. And Jason Garrett, too. But I have a whole other video about that. But nothing really eventful happened specifically today. Kadarius Tony is getting more and more reps. Um, of course, Kenny Galladay is still out. The news came out that Kenny Galladay will miss two to three weeks with that minor hamstring pull. And that's pretty much what I expected. I expected him to probably not play preseason. If he has some kind of miraculous recovery, maybe he'll play like a drive in the third preseason game. But other than that, I just don't see him getting much action in this preseason. Along with that, Saquon is, a report came out today that said that Saquon is going to end up, it's not finite yet, but it's saying that he'll be back by week three. So what does that specifically mean? It means, first of all, that we could be in a situation week one where we don't have Kenny Galladay or Saquon Barkley, which would be kind of terrible. That would, that would be bad for us. We will be missing our two biggest offensive weapons. And a big thing for us to do this offseason was to bring in new weapons for this offense to be better. And we we already didn't have Saquon last year because of injury. And we might not have him for week one again this year. But we're sure, it seems like they're sure, that he'll be back at least by week three. So I'm still holding out a hope that Saquon can be back for week one. Definitely, I'm hoping he can be back for week two. Because he always does something special against Washington. It's something about that team that they just can never stop Saquon, no matter how good their defense is. It just never works out for them. So I'm hoping he can at least be back by week two. The Broncos are a good defensive team. And I think we probably need to establish the run to be able to really be effective against them on offense and not have to turn it into a super defensive game because Drew Locke doesn't scare me much, especially because our secondary and our defense as a whole really looks like it's going to be great this year. But Drew Locke doesn't scare me much. But that defense against an offense with a shaky offensive line and you got Bradley Chubb and Von Miller out there. And then on top of that, you're missing your number one receiver and you're missing your starting top two or three running back in the league, that at that point can put you into some issues and some kind of trouble. But I'm hoping that they can both be back by week one, but that could definitely be hurtful. Kenny Galladay, again, I would just hold him out of this preseason completely. Maybe before that third preseason game, you have him practice. You know, maybe practices against that other team, but there's no point in going out there and risking an injury in a preseason game and bringing him back early because the preseason games don't count. And I think he's gotten enough work with Daniel Jones in the offseason, throwing the passes, you know, at Duke and, and at, I think they were in Houston for a little while, but they've, they've pretty much had a lot of connections all over the country, him and Sterling Shepard and a, I think Saquon, I'm not sure, but a bunch of receivers and Daniel Jones have, have gotten some kind of rapport this offseason, and Kenny Galladay's been one of them. So they've had a lot of reps. They'll get more. And even if he's back by week one and they're not really on the same page, he still has the potential to make big plays that can change the game. So get him ready for week one. That should be priority number one for the offense and priority number one for him because we just saw Daniel Jones with that hamstring last year, and we saw how much it affected him when we tried to rush him back. So make sure that that's all good. Other than that, I think we'll be good week one if we have Saquon or K KG. Even if not, I think we still have a good chance to win that game. It's just going to be a lot more difficult than it will be with one or both of them there. Another thing that was big, uh, before I get to that, I'll actually get to the fact that Joe Judge had another interview today. 
he talked a little bit about some of the the guys retiring which I had a whole nother video about that again. But he also talked about the fact that some of these bubble players, uh, back end of the roster players, are going to be looking uh, to, to play a lot in this first preseason game, which answers a ton of questions because we didn't know, are these players going to play mostly in the first game, or second game, third game? Because usually that fourth preseason game is when you make your last round of cuts and that usually has all of the back end roster players just trying to just make that last big play, uh, do that last thing right so they can make that roster. But we don't have four preseason games now. So Joe Judge is saying that they're going to get a lot of opportunities. And he wants to give those back into the roster players opportunities because he has to make cuts. So he wants those players to at least get a chance to show what they have and get some time in that game before they just start go you know before they just go and just start cutting people so i think that's a good idea hopefully the other teams are all on this code and they're all doing that same thing so we see players of the fourth string against players of the fourth string but you know maybe they go out there and throw their first string team out there and we play them we play our third stringers against them and that'll be an even bigger test for the back end of the roster kind of guys so that's probably what's going to be the plan Maybe Daniel Jones goes out and gets a drive, and then after that, all of the backups play the rest of the game. But I'm thinking that's going to be a heavy kind of focus to get those guys some reps in actual preseason games instead of you know giving those reps to vets because he probably feels a lot more confident in those dudes. Maybe the second game uh, is going to be the dress rehearsal game from now on, and then the third game would be you know kind of a mix like a, what the second game used to be. So we're in uncharted territory, so this is all speculation. But I know those guys are going to get a ton of reps. And then lastly, Rodarius Williams has shown up all day in practice. He has shown up, uh, and actually in the past couple of days too, he is all over the place. He is someone that I thought would go higher than where he went. But because of his age, I think he's about two or three years older than what most players would be coming out of the draft. And that pretty much held him back. Some teams pushed him back just simply because of his age. But he's a baller. He's been shadowing guys in man coverage, knocking passes loose. He got an interception. He tipped another pass away from someone. And Jabril Peppers ended up getting an interception. So Rodarius Williams is balling out. And guess what, guys? Look at our corner depth chart. We got James Bradbury. We got Adore Jackson, who's been having a great camp as well. We got Darnay Holmes who has been getting put in the blender by Sterling Shepard. But Sterling Shepard is a great route runner and a, and a vet, and he's only making Darnay Holmes better. Uh, but I don't expect Darnay Holmes to play bad during the regular season because he was great last year. And then on top of that, you got Aaron Robinson, who's there. You got Isaac Yonam, who was a solid guy for us yesterday or last year, but wasn't great for us. But I think he was solid. And then on top of that, Rodarius Williams is playing really good football. So we got a ton of depth at corner, a ton of depth, um, I think, at this point, inside and out. And I just can't wait for this secondary to get on the field, whether that be in the preseason or the regular season, because I don't see teams being able to throw the ball against us consistently and effectively unless you have a mega quarterback with a ton of weapons. And even then, I expect it to be difficult. It's going to only make things easier for our pass rush. But be on the lookout for Radarius Williams this first couple of preseason games because I'm convinced he's going to make the roster at this point and that what does that mean for Isaac Yardum, Sam Beal, Julian Love. I don't think Julian Love will get cut but a couple of these guys are probably in danger of losing their job to a guy like Rodarius Williams. Uh, lastly, nothing really happened today with the offensive line but they are getting thin because Zach Fulton did leave so I expect the Giants to go out and get Austin Ryder uh, if not, I expect them to probably look for some kind of a trade. Maybe you trade for a backup guard or a backup you know, center, and you give up a 6 7 round pick. I just think they got to get some more bodies in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to correct that. They do have to get some more bodies in here. Joe Judge actually mentioned that these guys are going to end up getting more reps than what's healthy for them, and they're going to end up tiring themselves out if he doesn't bring in some more bodies or change the drills, which he said he had to do today but they're going to bring some more offensive line depth in here 
definitely by Monday. I, I can't see them not working any faster than that. But that's all I have for today. Not really eventful, but everything is just pretty much ramping up to this first preseason game against the Jets. You guys have a great rest of your day. You made it this deep into the video. Come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily, and during the season, I'm gonna be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made this deep, go ahead and join the D6 squad.